Are you the owner of a USB printer? Or perhaps you've got a network printer with a faulty ethernet jack. Today, I've got a solution for you. We're gonna look at this little box. This is the Jowzet Networking USB Print Server. This is model LK100EW. You notice on the back, it's got two ethernet ports, USB and power. So what can this do? Well, you hook it up to your network, you plug in your printer to the USB port, and you can use your USB only printer or your network printer with a faulty ethernet jack as a network printer once again. Let's take a look at the Zhaozat website for a little more information and context. Here we are on their homepage and you can see they've got tutorials and tools and technical support. Here's the USB print server and they have a little bit of information about some of their devices and common questions. Come up here and we'll look at support. This model I've got is LK100W, so we'll take a look at this. And as you can see here, they've got instructions and installation guides for Windows and Mac OS. They've got mobile printing and a compatible list of printers. Under the download, tab, they've got a quick installation tool. Now, do you actually need this? Well, this is a great tool for beginners, but hey, we're on the Practical IT channel. We're a little bit beyond that stage. So, I'm going to show you a quick alternative to using the quick installation tool. Here on your screen, we've got a tool called Angry IP Scanner. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a scan of our network and I'm going to use a smaller range and we're gonna go ahead and see our top item here is 172.16.74.171 and it's the Zhaozet print server. Yes, I've renamed the host name already and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So if we go back over to our browser, we can see loading up the IP address will take us directly to the device. And the, the default password is admin. And that takes us here into our web interface. We'll take a look a little later at some of their tooling that makes this a little bit easier for less technical people, but let's look at a couple things here in the web interface just to get started. So you have the model ID, serial number and uptime, USB info, and some network information. Now, where I wanna point your attention to right off is IPP print. This is Internet Printing Protocol. We look at print service. The port number is 631. And if we go to port list, we can see that it's got the device name. It's set to start. And we've got here an IPP username and password. Now, this is important information to jot down. So the IPP password, we're going to change this to Jeremy, and we're going to change the password to something other than admin. We'll call it um, cadaver dog. The IPP address it lists here is HTTP, which I'll talk about this in a moment, but it lists the IP address with the port number slash USB one. Let's go over to our Linux Mint virtual machine and check this out. Okay, we're on a relatively fresh install of Linux Mint 22.1, which just released this week. And so we are gonna to go to the Mint menu. We're gonna to go to settings. 
and we're going to come down here to printers. This automatically detects my other network printer. To add my old network printer that's now using USB back onto this machine, we're going to go to add network printer internet printing protocol. And we actually want just plain IPP. And it gives you examples down here. So remember when I mentioned that this differs a little bit from what is shown in the web interface of the device. You want to follow what is in your Linux distribution to get this set up. So our actual URI is going to be IPP colon double slash the IP address colon the port number slash USB one. Your IP address will likely be different. You want to substitute your IP address in where I've got mine and you should connect without an issue. And forward, searching for drivers. Okay, so you can either select a printer from the database, you can provide a PPD file, uh, or you can search for a printer driver to download. I know this is a brother printer. So we'll select brother, forward, and we're going to scroll down. It's the HL5370DW. And it's got two possible drivers here. I'm going to use the top one, the Brother Script 3 recommended driver. And we'll say forward. Number of input trays. On my particular printer, it's two because I don't have the extra tray. Forward and printer name, description, and location is optional, and we'll click Apply. Printer added, and we're gonna print a test page. All right, we have successfully printed a test page. Now, let's take a look at a couple other pieces of the user interface, and then we'll look at some of the other tooling and the tricks that this little device has up its sleeve. In device status, we've got a little gear wheel here under action, and we can change the host name. There are various NTP servers. You can change those to something that's closer to you or to a local NTP server you have running on your local network. You can also change the time zone here. But what really sets this device apart from others is that it allows virtual USB access. Now, full disclosure, I have not completely got this working under Linux, although it's very close. I'm going to be continuing to do testing and I'll do a follow-up video when I have worked out the last of the kinks that I've encountered. But if we take a look here under virtual USB service, basic settings, it's got an enable and disable option here. We're gonna turn that on for now. Submit, and the device list is going to show the printer. So there's something else that we should look at. If you remember when we were looking at the Zhaozet web page under support and download they had a virtual usb connect tool and they have an option for not only windows and mac os but for linux as well i've already downloaded this and installed it on linux mint let's take a look at that right now it's listed as leon key virtual usb it does want you to authenticate and it will pop this up. So right now it's showing that the printer is in a disconnected status. Hold that thought. I've now disconnected the printer and if we click refresh, 
you'll see that I've now got a Firefly USB stick plugged in. And we can go ahead and hit connect on this and it's showing a connected status. If we jump back to the web interface and look at device list, you will now see that the Firefly device has been listed. It's USB 1 port 9100 and it's got an operation where you can edit or cancel. Let's edit and that lets you set a password. So we will just put in admin here for the time being and we'll save that. Just as an experiment, let's take a look at our IP address, port 9100 slash USB one, unable to connect, which I expected at this point, but we can look at this or potentially we could look at this on a Windows machine or on a Mac, find out the process to go through, the steps to take to get this connected, and then see if we can diagnose the issue on the Linux machine. Up to this point, I have not had a lot of luck, but there might be something simple that I'm missing as well. But wait, there's more. This wouldn't be the Practical IT channel unless I did a little bit of sleuthing. So we're gonna run this nmap command and we're going to see if we can determine what OS it's running and if there are any version numbers that we can find for various services. Let's take a look at that now. So the command is sudo nmap-sv-o, it's a capital O. This will detect the operating system and we give it the IP address. And we'll let this run for a minute and I'll be back. Okay, we've got the results of our nmap scan and we can see that we've got port 80 open, port 631, which is for internet printing protocol. It's got some text down here that I'd have to dig through a little bit more. And then it says device type is general purpose, running Linux 4.x. Uh, I'm hoping that it, the kernel is not that old, but um, it claims that it's running OpenWRT 19.07. Uh, again, that is a rather old version, but the box seems locked down and I'm not terribly worried about it. Although, yes, I would like to see a newer Linux kernel, but what guy that has a background in security wouldn't like to see? There's one other nmap script I want to run against this just to see what happens. And we're going to grab that from over here. That's this one. And we're going to do sudo, paste that in, and add our IP address. And this does actually report correctly that port 631 is, in fact, Internet Printing Protocol. Uh, whereas the scan up here uh, had, uh, I'm assuming this is a digital audio server of some variety. Um, which is just a, a miss report on that. All right, so what's the bottom line with this device? I have tested against Linux Mint. I did a little bit of testing with Debian. Wasn't quite as successful with that, but I tested with new versions of Debian, so that could be part of the issue there. I did also test this with macOS 15.2 and I had no issues setting up the printer on this device using internet printing protocol. Now, for you Windows users, I would gracefully point you at this video up here, which will take you to the PE for Doers channel. David recently did a video on this device and covered Windows in detail on his channel. And given the length of this video already, there's no sense in reinventing the wheel and covering that same material here. My bottom line and my use cases are really twofold. First, 
if you have a USB only printer and multiple computers on your network and you want to share that printer, this makes a great solution. Use case number two is if you have a network printer that for whatever reason, either the manufacturer is no longer updating the firmware for the printer or the ethernet port has gone flaky over the years. Again, this device makes a great solution. The price is certainly lower than buying a new printer. The one thing I didn't have 100% success with was testing the virtual USB side of the device. I feel like I'm about 80% there, but I've got some more testing to do. And when I've completed the testing and got a little bit more information about that, I'll do a follow-up video and keep you informed. To wrap up, I want to take a moment to thank the people at Zhaozette for sending over one of these devices free of charge for me to test. This has been an interesting experience and one I hope that all of you find useful. They have not, however, seen this video before it goes live. If there's something in particular you would like me to test on this device, please let me know in the comments and I'd be glad to put it through its paces as I am going to be continuing to do testing going forward and will be posting a follow-up video on the results of any further testing. If you want to acquire one of these devices, you can head over to amazon.com and as of 2025, you will find that this device is around 73 US dollars. I will have an affiliate link in the description. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.